Welcome to Public Safety Talk Radio, the podcast where all of our heroes in public safety, including law enforcement professionals, firefighters, EMTs, corrections officers, healthcare workers, and more. The show is produced by the POCUA and is founded upon its Soundness Initiative. This episode is sponsored by the Finest Service Organization, a provider of line of duty death home protection through many of our POCUA institutions. And now for part two of hiring practices in public safety. Yeah, we we are definitely on the same page because yeah, I've never worked in, in a firehouse, but with any team, yeah, and I've seen this for you know close to thirty years. And you know, teams are teams. You then you know, you you have you you build a certain dynamic, and you bring somebody new onto the team, you automatically change that dynamic. Yeah, yep. and. And I think that it tell me if I'm on, I'm on to something here is at the end of the day, yeah, I know that there's kind of a, a family friend component in the firehouse because you're so close, you're sleeping with each other, not with each other, but in close proximity. You know what I mean? There are, I don't even work that out. <laughs> there are stories. Not mine. Yeah. <laughs> But you know you're you're eating together. You know you're you're in the same house. Um, but you know when you have a family culture, you know, it it's it, while it's warm and nice, yeah, it has some negative pieces to it. You know where mm-hmm. even in business, many times people use the analogy: we're not a family, we're a sports team. You know we don't have to go out for a beer, but we need to get this job done. And you know, when it comes to to a firehouse. You, you add somebody on because they have the IQ and the physical ability to really do the job, but, you know, could create a ripple effect in that team that is a real hindrance on the job. I mean, you know, you have to you have to be able to trust not just physically and intelligently to be able to know what you're doing, but to have the character to do the right thing. Yeah, I'll use a, a, a very quick story from uh, a police friend that I have. Yeah, he was he told a story many years ago where he was in an active he was he was in a situation where, you know, the people were shooting and so forth. And and they had you know, a, a new officer, a, a lady that was on the job, you know, just a month or so. And she got so frazzled that she dropped her loaded gun and cried and went back into the car rather than backing up her people. <laughs> now, she might have very, I mean, she passed all the tests, obviously. She probably had the intelligence to know what to do. She physically probably had the ability to back these guys up, but just broke down. And you can't have that. <laughs> you got to, no. you got to, because that's dangerous for everybody in those situations. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, and that means that, you know, that that kind of you, you're kind of that's a great segue, I think, in talking about what some of the fallout is yeah. of not hiring for care. Um, and some of that fallout, it like it's it, there's it hits a couple of areas. Um, one of the areas uh, is um, cost. And I'll come back to mm-hmm. that. But the actual cost, how it actually affects the budget, attrition rates um, uh, actually affect the budget. Uh it's you know in academy when you get go off to fire so we we've hired you um uh for good or bad i i actually have a friend who uh is um in a large urban uh fire department um uh i i don't want to give his title right sure. now because i you know but the short story is you know they're up there and um and was talking to me about uh their academies and they typically hire 56 for each academy because they know they're going to lose six, seven, or eight. I said, yeah. six, seven, or eight every time? So said, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll get one out of injury, Mm-mm. maybe two. What's happening with the other ones? Well, you know, conduct, um, you know, they maybe don't want, uh, maybe they've decided it isn't their job or, you know, whatever. And like, so let me get this straight. So when you hire 56, how many applications do you get against that 56? It floats somewhere between 1250 and 1500 mm-hmm. so my argument is you're telling me that out of 15 if we round it up and say out of 1350 applications you can't find the right 56 mm-hmm. yeah you should be able to and and that includes the people that get to academy and and say well maybe this isn't for me 
they've done all these things. And it's pretty rare that by the time they get hired for Academy, that you're the first interview they've had. So they probably had a whole lot of interviews in there as well. And out of all that stuff, out of all that time and effort that that, that candidate's put in, it takes them going to Academy to realize that this is not about my character. That should be caught yeah. early by us as well. So attrition rates in Academy, that's part of the fallout of not hiring for character. And then conduct issues. If they pass Academy, these are the knuckleheads that go to the downtown fountain with mm-hmm. the engine and the strippers falling, you know, coming off of it for, <laughs> for our Christmas photos. I, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out, you know, where the problem is with that. But go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But, you know, I mean, you know, the drinking on the job. The, yeah. Um, uh, still, you know, uh, you know, somebody's leading these people um, having, uh, you know, somebody hired that chief 20 years ago. Yeah. So having that level of character where that chief either allows that to be OK or allows somebody to be wildly overweight but still doing this mm-hmm. incredibly physically taxing job or some you know or they get a DUI and well we've got HR stuff we've got to do and allowing that level of culture mm-hmm. right so conduct issues which I mean between lawsuits and and the time and angst that it takes to get somebody through the whole HR grind to eventually get rid of them, um, plus the rehire on the back end to fill their position if they're gone, massive costs. Yeah. Massive. Uh, I'm going to go back to Academy for a second and and talk about you know trying to trying to find the right characters out of that you know ballpark 1500 for for 50 odd people. Um, start to finish from the time we put out the application process the the announcement to the time they are done their probation which. You know, in the states is minimum of of twelve months. I did eighteen. Mm-hmm. That's some. That's pushing the six figure ballpark, seventy five to one hundred. The figures aren't necessarily out there, Ken. Um, uh, I'm 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 digging in for some data. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found a bit of data on hiring practices with LA City. Uh, there's it's it's buried data. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm having I'm definitely struggling uh trying to find that but i'm definitely on the hunt and it's out there uh one of the good things about the states is you know we've got enfers which is the national fire incident reporting system Mm -hmm. and it's the same system that allows us to say hey in in 2012 how many false alarms did ak ak adak wisconsin go on you can do this and you can actually find it canada does not have um that level they're working towards Mm -hmm. but they don't have that level but even with that ENFERS reporting system, there's not a lot of data out there um, about exactly how much it costs and what attrition rates are in academies and whatnot. I'm I'm writing on a lot of anecdotal data. I'm hoping to get a broad enough, and I'm and I and I'm going to throw a survey out there as well, uh, see what level of response I get to kind of get some harder data on it. But anecdotally, at least, Ken, uh, it is that six-figure ballpark, and if and if yeah. that same like I said, fire department that I'm using as an example, they're losing six people every academy and they're running three academies a year. That's roughly 18 people every year that mm-hmm. they're losing um, either in academy or or even somewhere in probation. If we're looking at that roughly, you know, 50, 50 grand, that's, what is that? Is that 900 grand? Yeah. That's 900 grand. That's a million bucks a year. I've had a 25 year career. Mm-hmm. If they've consistently done that, which I understand anecdotally, they do consistently, they've had the same process for the last 30 or 40 years. That means in my career alone, they've lost somewhere around $25 million just in not hiring the right people. Those are not perfect numbers. They're not clean numbers. I'm well yeah. aware of that. But well, I think it paints a picture. Yeah. Yeah, you're I mean, you're you're clearly on to something. It, you know, I see this in the States probably a little bit more mm-hmm. in law enforcement um than I do in um firefighting. But um, you know, I remember and this wasn't that long ago, I was sitting having a beer with my dad a couple of years ago. And, you know, we were talking about law enforcement and some of the issues that we're having in the United States. 
and uh, I talked to him, and he was never a, f- a firefighter or a police officer. He was a, a teacher for his whole career, but uh, knew a lot of um, uh, firefighters and police officers in the city of Chicago for some reason. <laughs> and, and I mentioned, I said, yeah, to this, the same thing that we kind of started our discussion with is, you know, why are we not raising the level of a first responder? You know, where where they're getting they're they're getting trained and paid at the level of a doctor or a lawyer and in, in that they're they're on this this type of level. And you know, he told me a story. He said, you know, I remember you know, talking to friends of mine, you know, where they were say a police officer or they worked for the city of Chicago and and their son was, you know, getting ready to graduate high school. And they'd say, well, you know, I can get you a job for a city, for the city. You know, what do you want to do for the city? Do you want to work in sanitation? Do you want to work in the office? Do you want to be a police officer? And, and I'm like, all right, you know, we're putting, you know, pushing paper and collecting garbage you know, at the same city level as a police officer. Really? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like that, you know, I, I just, you know, that was the first time he ever told me that I'm like, yeah, that's horrendous. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, you know, if I got to say, you know, I'm going to work for the city. Garbage man, law enforcement, you know, really nothing, nothing then, against garbage men out there. We need those folks and I appreciate they do that job. But is, <laughs> yeah. you know, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we've we got, you know, there's there's a movement. Um, uh, It's really being forwarded by um, uh, by the leadership under fire institute um and they have an initiative they've done a a good amount of work with the fdny uh with their mental performance initiatives um and uh and and part of that is the recognition that uh, police and fire Mm -hmm. are what's called a mission critical team so Mm -hmm. it used to be you know navy seals that's a mission critical army rangers that's a mission critical team there's a very formal definition of what mission critical teams right it's a a limited number Mm -hmm. of people usually three to seven They've got a limited um, amount of time to complete an objective, and it they operate in high consequence arenas, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Navy SEALs, that's very obvious, uh, um, you know. But police and fire, it's obvious. It's also very obvious. You, know, right. you run a lot of you, know, you do traffic stops and and you do you know wellness checks, but you also and then five minutes later you're in a gunfight, right? Or um, yep. or the same thing with us. You know, I've actually I've gone on backaches as as a paramedic fire medic Mm -hmm. um and then a half an hour later make an entry in the front door on a fire Mm -hmm. so you never you never quite know it's not quite as clear as 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 some of those uh high performing military teams but we are still considered uh mission critical teams and when we start framing um the the team members that make up mission critical teams it once again furthers the thought i mean think about what it takes to become a seal Mm mm-hmm Right. And every SEAL that has succeeded, then made it past Hell Week and the I think it's six or eight months of all the sure. training aside from Hell Week. And they all talk about, yeah, we end up, you know, we're all yapped out and our biceps are big that from the sheer work. But it has nothing to do with physical. It's all about mm. this and this. That's the one that gets you through. Right. We're not doing that with police and fire. Yeah. Have your resume, have your certifications, answer these mundane interview questions. We need to frame them like they are mission critical team members. Yeah. So, so as we begin to wrap up a little bit here, yeah. you know, give me, give me the silver bullet. You know, what's what's the answer to all this? You know, you're a sharp guy, Chief Dave. You know, what's <laughs> what, what's that? You know, what's what's let's snap our fingers and make this change and, and turn everything around to where it needs to be. <laughs> if I had a magic wand, yeah. I would um, or a magic axe, whatever. Or a magic yeah. axe, you know. <laughs> I I wish I had like an effect, like almost a LeBron James who does the chalk. I wish I had like a magic pixie dust effect come off the axe. <laughs> yeah, well, LeBron stole that from Michael <laughs> Jordan. But anyhow, continue. Oh, that's right. That's right. He did. Um, uh off camera i'll tell you a quick lebron story um, <laughs> okay. well one. if not a, if if not a silver bullet because you know i was half joking on that you know is there you know a number one tip or a couple of things that 
any public safety department, you know, could be doing and actually implement fairly quickly that would make at least somewhat of a difference? Yeah. Um, if by chance a chief or chiefs are watching this, is I would challenge them to finish the podcast, turn it off, sit down on the computer and call a meeting and say, you know what? This is ground zero. This is this is point zero where we are now going to take a serious look at our seven-year-old interview questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to start looking at whether or not do we bring in a citizen, maybe a citizen of very high EQ, but a citizen into the interviews. What training can we do for our interview panel, like City of Vancouver? And, and there are others out there. I just brought up that one, that one city. Let's get past those same bloody questions, the same 15, 20, 25 questions. Let's actually take a serious look at what it is we want filling that uniform beyond what's being shown on TV. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my God, here's a news clip about this firefighter hero, right? Let's fill that uniform with people that are of high moral standing, that are made up of strong moral character, mm -hmm. that, that do the things that are decent and right. And they do it all with resilience and grit. Let's find those people. I don't think it's hard take a look at the number of resumes that end up in your res in your inbox versus how many that you hire we've got them in there we're just passing them over yeah i i agree with you i think that the change begins at that chief level in that yeah i see here in the states that yeah and ironically i'll i'll try not to ramble here but i listened to a uh, a ted talk not too long ago that talked basically i'm paraphrasing at how much government hates and tries to avoid and slow down change yeah that you know, that they they like their process and and this is how it's been for 20 years so we're not going to change this because then it'll mess everything up um, and I see that, especially in law enforcement here. But what I'm also seeing, fortunately, is at the chief level, you know, some of these chiefs that are getting into leadership roles that, you know, understand, you know, the mental and psychological piece, you know, to these jobs and aren't just, while we still have some of them out there, aren't just saying, you know, okay, you know what, we, you had a bad day, go have a beer, come back you know, on your next shift, you know, and, and get over it. Cause you know, and frankly, you know, maybe for some people that does work, but for others, it, it doesn't. Um, right. So I, I think, I think that change and at least looking at, all right, let's let maybe we need to change. Maybe we don't, but let's take a close look at this before we just blindly continue down this path. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? And I, and frankly, I think the minute that a chief um, fosters a culture of maybe we don't need to change mm -hmm. is the minute you start laxing, lapsing back into complacency. Yeah. We all need to change. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, you know what? The way I cut the bloody lawn sometimes needs mm -hmm. to change. It, it. We all need to change. Um, but but going back to we're hiring mission critical team members. Mm -hmm. um, we're no. It's not 1954. We're not hiring Uncle Joe's son anymore right and we shouldn't and you know and there's liability issues behind that as right. well um but we're not doing that anymore right yeah we say culturally we do hire for character and i'm back to what i said in minute one we hire for character here's your crappy interview questions <laughs> right i just want to and this might be a finish off i'm not too sure but one of the ways that you make government move is you put a dollar sign in front of it mm-hmm Right? Yep. And that's why, the, Frank, I'm putting the onus on me to try to find the data that gives some numbers to it. What does yep. it really cost us um, when we lose somebody? Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, you, you know, know what? That, that just, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's but, fine. But yeah, that that is one of the tactics I see 
um, a lot of organizations put forth, um, you know, especially I can rail, rattle a few of them off, like Yoga for First Responders is one mm -hmm. that comes to mind, you know, which is, okay, you know, yeah, it's going to cost X for, for this type of training, but... Yeah, you know, what are you? What is it costing you in you know injuries and psychological issues? Da 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 da. da. You know, how much does that cost you? You know, why don't? Yeah, you know, fortunately, you know, in in the United States, and I see this in the healthcare industry through my wife, is that fortunately, you know, some people are actually getting a clue, which is you know what? I would rather pay X for for, for, for preventative medicine and preventative techniques then have to pay why you know because this person's in the hospital because we didn't do x and i think i, I love the way you frame that i and i frankly i never thought of that before you know if, if i'll you send you a bill it, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well okay i'll tell you how much i can i'll tell you how much i can afford and uh send me a know. biscotti all right yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. um no if, if you frame it like looking at sound hiring practices, because again, I assert that we do not have sound hiring practices. If you frame sound hiring practices as a prevention measure, that's really, that's an interesting, um, that's an interesting take on it. That's an interesting, I, I like that. Yeah. Like well, that. feel free yeah. to use it. <laughs> uh, oh, I will. Um, and I promise I won't put my name on that. <laughs> Well, well, who knows? Maybe, maybe someday we'll we'll end up working together up there in Canada or in the states. But, um, yeah. Before before I let you go, for those folks that are watching or listening that want to learn more about what the, you're doing, the great stuff that you're doing through Fire Edge, how best can they find you? Uh, you know, um, I actually find that most of my uh, uh, messaging is through LinkedIn. Straight mm -hmm. up find me, Dave Robertson. Uh, there's a few of us out there. It's a fairly common name. Funny enough, there is another Chief Dave Robertson that works two hours away from me. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had crossed emails many times, but uh, Dave Robertson uh, with Lampton Shores Fire Department mm -hmm. um, and Fire Edge. Uh, um, I love that you asked that because it it uh, something else puts the onus on me for is to... Uh, um, get my butt into gear and actually revisit my website, but you can find that, especially mm -hmm. if you are someone that's looking to get into the fire service. Uh, uh, but my, all my contact info is in there. Um, if somebody wants to talk to me about this, about this subject um, and definitely look for me uh, being far more vocal on this subject in, in the near future. Um, I, I think it's where the fire service needs to go. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know what? I always have a great conversation with yes. you before, during, and after the episode. <laughs> uh, definitely everybody out there, check out fireedge.com. Uh, look up uh, Dave Robertson on LinkedIn. That's how I found him, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, Chief Dave, thanks for being on the show again, my friend. Thank you very much. Dave Robertson, the sequel. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you again. And thank you to all of you who have either watched or listen to this episode of Public Safety Talk Radio, and we'll be back with you next week with another great guest. Public Safety Talk Radio was produced by the POCUA. The POCUA is a consortium of financial institutions serving law enforcement as well as other first responders and public safety professionals. To learn more about our association and to find one of our credit cards or service providers near you, go to www.policecreditunions.com And always remember, if you aren't working with one of our POCUA credit unions, you're just banking with an institution that just so happens to serve first responders. As a public safety professional, you and your family deserve better. Find a POCUA credit union today.